Okay, so now we're going to the boundary with all this. It's the same, same scheme, same concept, now we're attacking the boundary with it. Okay, the rules stay the same though. Now we just don't have to make that block on that overhang defender because we don't have one into the boundary. The rules are still going to stay the same for the receiver and for that lead running back. So there's still going to there's going to be different formations, there's going to be different pictures, but the, the, the run scheme stays the same and the rules stay the same from a perimeter standpoint. So now we're going to run it to the boundary. The X receiver, the boundary receiver, the outside guy is still thinking he's push cracking to that safety. So he's responsible for this free safety. So he's got to make sure that his eyes are on that free. And if we get motion like that, okay, he's thinking he's pushing the corner off. But if that free safety comes down low, my eyes got to be on that free. I can't really push this corner off. He can only go vertical for one step. And he's got to come inside right now to make sure he gets a piece of that free safety. Okay, running back is still leading out on the corner. You just don't have a number two receiver. You don't have an overhang that you have to worry about into the boundary. So we're always going to be four by one, four yards away from the quarterback, one yard depth. And we'll grade our pitches, too, on this during fall camp, during spring practice. Let me let it run for a second. We probably grade that a B. Like we, we want all of our pitches to be as many A pitches as possible because obviously you don't have to maintain these blocks as long as, as you need to. So if that running back is catching that pitch, even with the quarterback, and he's going downhill, we would label that as an A pitch. We keep stats on it during the spring and during fall camp. He's slightly behind. I mean, it's decent, but he's a little bit behind him right there. We want him to be catching it downhill. So these blocks are having to be maintained, and you can hit it right on time right there. But four by one on any of our pitch plays. Anytime there's a pitch player involved, He's always trying to maintain that four by one relationship. Okay, so there it is to the boundary. Here it is again to the boundary off of a um, unbalanced picture. Okay, so now if we get, in, get him into an unbalanced check that we're trying to attack, now I don't have to worry about push cracking to the safety. We don't have an, a, a receiver over here. We've got a tight end over, two receivers to the field, two running backs in the backfield. Now this lead back is taking that corner, whoever the, the secondary defender is, that's who's going to end up taking, trying to kick out. Okay, and the tackle's got to understand right here where this play's trying to hit. We false key the wheel linebacker enough right there, even though he's still recognizing trying to get out of the box, the tackle's got to take that path to make sure he keeps him pinned inside. Don't let him scrape over, scrape over the top. We get lucky right there on the wheel. He ends up reading it pretty decent. Okay, but you can do this from an unbalanced set. If you, if you run it from a two running back alignment, you still have that lead blocker into the boundary. Okay, so here it is again into the boundary. X receiver still push cracking to the free safety. Running back is leading out for the corner. Okay, tackle should have a pretty easy shot of trying to get to that will linebacker based off his alignment right here. Okay, but again, you got to have some counters off of this from a play action standpoint and potentially some inside runs because eventually if you start doing this a little bit, those backers are going to start running. So quarterback does a great job right here of seeing that picture right there. Will linebacker scrapes way over top of the box and it ends up being a quarterback run. He cuts it back inside. So it doesn't have to automatically be a pitch if you're getting a look where we don't have good leverage. Those backers are really turning around and could end up being a quarterback run right there if you get that heavy squeeze scrape. So those are just some variations off of two back. Now I want to just show you some, some variations of it off of one back. We major in it off of two back just because that's who we are. But I wanted to tag some of these because probably th maybe this fits your, your system, your personnel a little bit better. Okay, so one way we try to get to it off of one back is basically getting to essentially the same, same play, but use an escort or jet motion right here by a slot receiver or a tight end to become that lead back. So the rules are still staying the same to the field, even though we're in one back right here. He's pushing to the spur. He's going to crack the safety. Now the quarterback's going to snap it before he crosses the center, and he's, becoming, he's taking the place of that second running back leading on the corner. Okay, and on this one right here, we can, it's game plan week to week based off of what our favorite formations, what our favorite play actions are. But here the quarterback's going to open up towards it. So I believe in this game plan we had where we had the little tight end flat, uh, split zone RPO. So we just wanted to pair up the freeze option off that same motion, same formation, all that stuff right there. Okay, we don't get a great block on the safety right here. If we get a better piece of them right here, that ball's going to hit like that first one did earlier in the, in the, in the tape where he should be kicking out that corner, and hopefully that running back hits it outside of that block on the safety to the field. OK, 
Okay, no difference, same rules for the O-line, no change in, in their rules. Okay, you don't have to counter it every time. You don't have to open up opposite. If you feel more comfortable with that quarterback, open up towards it. So he sees that defensive end, you can do that too. You're still getting the same thing. If we can just get him to pause for a count, if we can get him to freeze just for a second, we feel like our tackle should be able to get up to that second level and get that ball outside. 